Uh, please Thank uh, you. briefly uh, introduce yourself and country, your name and country, please. I am Lupino Lazaro from the Permanent Representation of the Philippines to Rome-based agencies here. Um, and good afternoon to everyone. As we say in our country, magandang hapon. For the first question, first allow me to express appreciation for the organizers of this uh, seminar. This is indeed uh, one of those activities that we are encouraging under the International Year of Family Farming because this helps raise the awareness on the importance of family farms and in this occasion, family forests. And uh, through these uh, concrete experiences, the sharing of all of these knowledge really enrich the uh, knowledge and uh, the better understanding of what the situation of family farmers and family farmers forests are worldwide. So uh, just uh, going in, in that uh, direction, uh, in the connections between family forests, forests and family farms are uh, indeed very important so that, uh, as, as I mentioned, we could better determine what their requirements are, what assistance they need, and uh, uh, also have a better picture of how they work. Um, if uh, some of you are aware that uh, there is no internationally agreed definition of uh, family farming and that uh, it would be really relative to each country and it, to each region. That's why uh, this uh, kind of description that we are getting from, from the panelists help us see how they look at uh, each of their uh, sectors, their family forests and family farms. And that would help also uh, uh, us at, even at the global level to, to establish what, uh, what, we, what, what uh, sectors are needed to be given the ben benefits. And uh, maybe just two, uh, 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 one question and one uh, maybe a suggestion. Because aside from the, the sectors that are mentioned here, I think the youth would also be an important sector that could be looked at. So maybe at the last question, not only women, but uh, probably on, on the youth sector, because as we know, they are the future, and uh, they would carry on this family farming uh, endeavor. And uh, the, the question, maybe any one of the panelists uh, would be uh, uh, able to, to answer maybe at the later stage is that uh, since this is the uh, celebration of the International Year of Family Farming, what would be your main message or main expectation in favor of family forestry in the celebration of this international year? Thank you. Thank you very much. Maraming uh, salamat po. There are a few more hands. Uh, perhaps to keep this more gender balanced, we'll, we'll go to uh, our colleague in the back. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm not answering the question, but when I read the question... Could you it... introduce yourself? Sorry, first? my name is Emilia Arthur. I come from Ghana. Um, there, there's another question embedded in the question for me, and, and for me it is strengthen whose understanding? Whose understanding do we need to strengthen? Because from the presentations, I think I caught different levels of government, for example, national government, local government, government appointees, government agencies, but also, of course, the individuals and the farmers themselves. So whose understanding are we strengthening and for what objectives for the different sets of people that we identify is a question that is coming to mind now. Thank you very much, uh, Toth. That's an excellent point. Uh, the gentleman here had his, had his hand up before, please. Thank you. Miguel Lovera with the Catholic University of Asuncion, Center for Rural Reality Research, something like that with the <laughs> translation. Um, well, the question is, is, is why, isn't it? And, and I think um, the first thing, following up on the the, the previous speakers, it, it's going to be to define uh, family farms and, and family forests. I think we all we all know uh, f clearly from the presentations what what this means at, at this forum. But uh, just uh, we we better make sure that we are on the same page on on this understanding because uh, what we see on the ground is something completely different. 
which is family farms, family forests, family agriculture, uh, as a marginal type of agriculture that can feed these poor farmers and, and uh, big access to the market is to large-scale monoculture, transgenic, uh, you name it, you know? And, and we have to be very, um, <laughs> what, what to say? I think we need to be activists to say, uh, to, to solve this uh, and to uh, say, well, look, do not monopolize the market access for family farming, family forest products, because we want them, because we know how they are produced, we know their social role, we know that they are uh, providing all sorts of other services uh, and not just the product we, we purchase. Uh, and it's not like the other products that have that carry uh, along health uh, problems, uh, environmental havoc, uh, you name it, even civil wars. So um, that's why. Thank you for uh, addressing the question. <laughs> okay, let's go to the gentleman there. We'll, we have time for one or two more and then we'll, we'll probably move on. Please. Uh, I think, thank you. Uh, I'm Ganasyam Pandey, I'm also from Nepal. I'm an advisor of FACOFON and coordinating GHCF. Uh, this is a very important question itself, why importance? Uh, I think I want to bring two, three aspects uh, why this is important. One is, uh, uh, if you see the context of the poor country like Nepal, maybe other countries, now the situation in the rural areas, uh, the most educated people are uh, young people, they are migrated to the, either in the city or to the abroad. Now the agricultural land uh, is uh, uh, becoming abundant. So that land need to be the recultivate, re-farm. So maybe the, this uh, family forest and uh, family farms need to integrate it together to, 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 to produce much more food, fuel and fiber. And in terms that is related with the finance or money or economy sector. So my first aspect is uh, to revive the, some kind of the initiative in the rural areas, uh, maybe to, to, to bring back the people in the, their farmland, their agriculture land, so that they can produce the more food, more goods, and more services. That, that is one thing. Second is about the uh, forest and agriculture are in isolation in many countries. They are not very much integrated. Even in the government, there is a Ministry of Agriculture and Ministry of the Forest, Ministry of Environment, uh, and Ministry of the Water Resources. There are so many ministries because they want to be more minister. But uh, they are integrated, interconnected each other. But uh, without integrating this agriculture, land, forest, and water, uh, everything is necessary for the rural communities. They have to, uh, been working together. So uh, the, this is a need to have uh, some kind of the collective platform or collective uh, action uh, to link between forest and agriculture with live, live, live structs. So th that's, that's the second aspect. And third is about the both uh, agriculture and forest. Farmer are the custodian of that. That uh, that's uh, they have to be recognized the, uh, on on this kind of the management practice. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cam. Those are excellent points. Okay, we can take uh, one more from our colleague from Amman here, Indonesia. Hello, okay, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. My name is uh, Rukka from Indonesia. I work with the Indigenous Peoples Alliance of the Archipelago Indonesia. And we have uh, 2,230 community, indigenous communities as members. Uh, and I would, like to, I would like to put together your questions number one and number three because they're very much uh, related and I would like to link to the first frame earlier when we talk about the enabling um, environment, which is the secure tenure. 
And that's true because in Indonesia, our problem, the problem of our indigenous communities uh, living and farm, farming in the forest is really the tenurial uh, security. The government, and when we're talking about the understanding, it has to be government who first to get enlightened when we talk about understanding. Uh, why? Because our members who live in what so-called forest zones were kicked out and put in prisons for three and a half years and they have to pay fine for uh, 150,000 US dollar where the hell they are going to, sorry for my language, they are going to get that uh, money. But they support uh, big companies and minings and loggers to get into the uh, forest and destroy the environment. And they opened uh, what they call fo uh, one million hectares uh, food concessions that actually kills the the what uh, the local uh, local farmers and their indigenous. Uh, so when the first question is on understanding, I think it it has to be the on the government side to really uh, to that to really work and uh, to try to understand why the small um, scale farm, uh, farming system, the indigenous, the local system, will actually secure the, th they will be the one who will feed the world and not the big company like Monsanto um, and, 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 and the like. And, and that's why we are very much focused on the legal and policy advocacy because our government, uh, they don't do their work. And um, in, in the end, and then my second question is why the question has to be uh, linkages between the, far of the farmers, the small scale farmers, indigenous local system with, with the market. Why it has to be always market uh, oriented? Uh, because I think that's, that's again the, the questions if we talk about uh, equity, equality and social justice. Because one, it, first you, you put it as market oriented and it's very difficult to bring 